don't want this to sound like too cliche and like get all the eye rolls, you know, but really it is prioritizing and, and understanding what's important to you. Good morning, Cassie. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing? Good. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. excited to have our conversation today and dive into our coffee with Cassie mom chat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Still working on the jingle. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I just listened to the episode again the other day and I was like, oh. My. <laughs> sang on the podcast. Yes. No, I loved it so much. Oh my gosh. I need to have, I still need to have Ron do like a jingle, like for us to come in. I think we need like a theme song for this conversation. Fireworks. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to give an update on kind of like things that are going on in our lives. And then we have a big question to unpack and dive into. And I'm really, I'm excited to have the conversation with you and kind of see what you guys are doing on your end too. So for the audience, Cassie and I just wrapped up our homeschool year. The girls and I, we're going to still kind of go through the summer, but with just a different type of curriculum, we're just going to do more hands-on activities and outside stuff, but we're really, really done with kind of our, well, with Tech Trep Academy, which is what we use for our submissions. And Cassie, you use the same thing too. So we just finished up. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a hurdle. <laughs> like at the end of the year, you're like, must complete the school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Get shout out to the, you know, public school teachers. Cause wow, that's just with one child, you're like, oh my gosh, how does, how does this happen every day? You know, with, with multiple kids, but it's yeah. such a rewarding thing when you get done because, you know, you, you can reflect on what they've learned and, you know, I mean, Braxton's picking up a book. We don't get through the book, like he's picking up a book and reading it. And he was having trouble with letter sounds at the beginning of the year. So we're, we're doing good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for you, it's like a huge milestone. I mean, you guys completed your first year of homeschool and that's, I think that's something to be absolutely celebrated. We finished our second year of homeschool and I felt like this second year for us was really, really strong. Um, that first year we did a lot of like quote de-schooling, you know, getting the public school mentality out of my mind and my heart space and embracing homeschool for what it is. That's some of the stuff that you were really working on this year and focusing on. And then the second year for me was really just you know, I don't want to say buckling down, but really just like finding that consistency and, um, embracing all of what homeschool looks like for us as our individual family, not for what it should look like because of other people. And so mm -hmm. I found myself like super excited and wanting to celebrate, which is, I ended up reaching out to you because I wanted that validation, I guess, mm -hmm. and that experience. And so, yeah. um, I wasn't, so I, I want to kind of unpack this story and what happened a little bit, because I think yeah. it's a big learning experience for us, which hopefully will help other moms, but I wasn't getting that, um, feeling and that excitement from Brad. And so I, that's why I reached out to you and I was like, congratulations, you made it through your first year. Cause I was like, Oh, nobody's celebrating me. Like nobody yeah. had done that for me. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to pour out to somebody else then, because I know that that feels, if I'm missing that, then I I'm guessing that Cassie is missing that too. So I'm going to make her feel really good today. So I was like, yeah. congratulations. I'm so proud of you. You made it through your first year. And then, um, you know, I had really kind of, you know, encouraged Brad, like, Hey, I made it through the, you know, our second year. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. And then I still didn't get much back. And so I was like, to heck with this, I'm taking Cassie out to dinner and we're going to celebrate. Um, but I kind of did it out of a little bit of bitterness and resentment. <laughs> yeah. And turns out like you kind of were missing that from Jake also. Yeah. And yeah. then the experience after that, I realized that this actually is okay. Like, I don't have to seek that from just Brad. I can seek this feeling of celebration and excitement and joy, and that I'm proud of myself. I can share that with you. I yes. don't have to just share it with Brad. What are your yeah. thoughts? Yeah. 
No, I'm, and actually I'm really glad that you had reached out and, and you sent me that message on congratulations, you made it through a school year because honestly, I probably would have gotten done. Like we were, you know, we were kind of doing maybe one or two days of um, school a week, um, just as we were wrapping up the year, because we were at that, like, okay, we're, we're really excited to get into summer. We're, you know, really um, not burnt out on the school, but just like, all right, I can sense that we're approaching that finish line time when we should be done. So I probably wouldn't have like celebrated the end of the school year. I would have just, my celebration would have just been not um, including that in our schedule anymore. But now that you reached out and you made it a big deal for me, I'm like, oh, you're right. I really did need that validation. And I really did need to celebrate that huge milestone. Like you said, it was our first homeschool year and your second homeschool year. So you're very, very new also. And so to celebrate that together and find that for ourselves, um, it was huge. Mm -hmm. Oh so, yeah. 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 It's so easy to like move right into the next season, you know? Yeah. And so, <clears throat> Well, for example, the other day, you know, everybody always tells you, you need to celebrate, celebrate the little wins, celebrate the little mm -hmm. things. It is so difficult to celebrate little wins and little, little things like that, which are not little, they're really big, but it's very difficult to celebrate when you have your family and your children pulling you in these other directions. It's like, okay, done with this, moving on to the next thing done with yeah. that, moving on to the next thing that you don't get a moment to pause you know, that intentional time where I told Brad, I didn't even ask permission. I'm like, I'm taking Cassie out on Thursday night and we're yeah. going to dinner yeah. because otherwise we would have just, like you said, like just skipped past it and moved on to the next thing. And the other day we hit a huge milestone achievement with the podcast and it, and I, I ended up getting a little bit frustrated because I'm like, all of the books, all of these personal development books tell you celebrate the, celebrate the wins, take a moment to pause and celebrate the wins. And I was like, there are no moments to pause yeah. and celebrate the wins, right. you know, unless you intentionally make them happen. So, yeah. you know, celebrating that big milestone with the podcast, it didn't happen because we didn't create space for it. So yeah. taking time to create space, to celebrate finishing up the school year, not celebrating with the kids, like that's their own, they can have like, have ice cream smoothies, you know, take them out to do something fun, but it's celebrating myself yes. and celebrating you and creating yeah. space to do that. So I'm glad that we were able oh, yeah. to go do that together. Right. Yeah. And like, like a, yeah. Cause you, cause those, those end of year celebration things, they are often integrated with the very next season. So like mm -hmm. school year's done, gardening season begins, but I'm schooling and gardening at the same time. So you're like, okay, well, you know, yeah, you, you need to acknowledge that separation of one thing is done without having to jump right into the next, because yeah, like you said, make the space for it. Cause like everything's like that. You always mm -hmm. And if things start meshing together, integrating, and then you're moving on to something else before you even realize, oh, actually that was a really challenging season. You know, it could be a whole nother year when I'm starting the next school year that I'm like, wait a second, I still yeah. haven't really acknowledged and celebrated the last year before I'm jumping into another year. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, that's so true. The other thing too, it was really good for me to realize like I can celebrate that outside of my marriage, outside of Brad. Mm -hmm. because I get so, I mean, Brad's my best friend, obviously I'm around him all the time. Yeah. And so that sort of like aha moment of, oh, but he's not really my homeschool partner. Like yeah. you're really my homeschool partner or the moms at the park when we chat and things like that, like that's yeah. really my homeschool support group. Mm -hmm. And so for me to expect to celebrate with him, um, to, to, to get what I'm needing from it, from that experience in that moment, mm -hmm. I, it was a big aha moment for me to say like, okay, I actually do need to kind of pivot and yeah. maybe seek that somewhere else. Yeah. And so rarely as stay at home moms, just stay at home in general, not necessarily homeschool moms. We have a hard time reaching out to other moms mm -hmm. because we don't want to be vulnerable and like, well, what happens if they don't feel the same way or what happens if they leave or move on, you know, move or, you know, that friendship crumbles. Um, we have a hard time reaching out and being vulnerable to say, Hey, I need you to celebrate with me because you know, you're in the same space as I am and, and lean on somebody else that is not your spouse. Mm -hmm. That's really hard for moms. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that with Jake? I mean, do you feel like that's hard for you to do, or do you think that you're a little more used to leaning on other moms? 
No, I'm actually very much an introvert and I'm very shy. So I'm, Mm -hmm. and I don't want to inconvenience other people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm like, you know, if, if someone reaches out to me, I, I, you know, I will be there. I never would have reached out to you because I would have been like, oh, you know, she's probably doing her own thing. And, you know, she's, she's already had a year under her belt. So she's, you know, I wouldn't have been like, I need this for myself. And, and I need that from Amy instead of, I would have just made Jake kind of bend to that role, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. he was happy to like, oh yeah, you know, it's the end of the year. And, you know, good for you. And, you know, uh, we had a conversation about how we should celebrate the end of the school year, but it was, you know, he works during the week. And so he was busy during the times that, you know, he was gone or Braxton was gone for the weekend. And it just, it kind of like the, the conversation that we had about what should we do as a family to celebrate that last day, it kind of just ended because we were like, Mm -hmm. oh, it's not going to work, but you know, you and the girls are there during the week. And so to do something special, um, with you that, that was but yeah, I definitely could have made, had Jake, <laughs> you know, celebrate with me, but it wouldn't have been the same because he would take, you know, the occasional Monday in school Braxton or, you mm-hmm. know, things like that, where you are, you, you know, exactly where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I, it was really, that was a really big aha moment for me. I don't know if I'd ever really, I mean, maybe subconsciously I knew that that was available, but to actually really unpack that and be like, no. I can seek this joy and this excitement outside of my marriage, outside of my husband, um, was really, I don't know, just kind of like empowering and kind of freeing to know that that Mm -hmm. was sort of okay. But anyways, okay. So yay for us. (laughs) now (laughs) Now that the school year is done, that, that season of life, now we're jumping into summertime and that gets way more hectic and busy as we're like, you know, doing family trips and, um, you know, um, oh gosh, sports are starting, summer sports are starting and, you know, gardening and all the outside projects and stuff. So my next question, um, or my question for you is how do you, how do you and the girls, Brad and the girls, you as a family and you as a couple, how do you like, how are you intentional about your time together? Because, you know, mm-hmm. often we can just be two ships passing in the night. Like you, you don't really acknowledge, um, know that you need alone time with each member of your family. How do you like schedule that in? Mm -hmm. No, I, I love that question going into this busy season. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of two parts, right? So there's like intimate connection and intentional time between Brad and I, and then there's intimate connection with us as a family. And really you could even say three parts because then there's like intimate connection with each of the children, each of my girls. Um, Mm -hmm. but really like that comes for me just throughout the day with each of us, the the girls and I, so really for us as a family, I just kind of want to talk about us as a family when Brad is around and how we connect that way. And then also just, um, Brad and I as a couple. So, I, it's really challenging. Okay. Let's just yeah. like preface yeah. this entire conversation with yes. it's really fucking hard <laughs> well, because you can totally make a plan and write yes. it out in your schedule and stuff. And then, I mean, life happens and then it all goes downhill. So yes. yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want this to sound like too cliche and like get all the eye rolls, you know, but really it is prioritizing and, and understanding what's important to you. So for us, it really comes down to prioritizing, but I will also say that Brad and I have been together 15 years, you know, we'll, we'll be celebrating our 11th anniversary, no 16 years. Oh my goodness. Um, our 11th anniversary in June. So our bar, like our expectations for, like intimate time and quality time for us to connect as a couple is, is pretty low right now. Like our, (laughs) our expectations are maybe more realistic than they used to be when we had, when we first had the kids. So like, we're pretty good if we get the kids in bed and, and we can kind of tidy up the house together and have a conversation while we're tidying and finishing up the dishes. So that for us really is a, big part of it is getting the kids in bed on time. I will say that that becomes more challenging in the summertime when the days get longer and we don't have, you know, as many like school obligations the next day. So the kids are more apt to stay up till eight 30 or nine o'clock versus like a hard and fast seven, eight o'clock bedtime. Yeah. So what I do is I mentally like swap the, the mindset of, okay, 
well, Brad and I aren't getting this intimate time in the evenings right now, but we're spending really quality time together as a family at night. So like, for example, we've been just taking all of our food outside and eating it around the fire pit, you know, like less mess inside. We're all eating outside and then the kids get to kind of stay up and play. And what happens is what I've been noticing is the kids kind of go off and play. They'll jump on the trampoline or whatever. And Brad and I will have a moment to just have a conversation by the fire because they're Mm -hmm. engaged in independent play because it is a little bit later. So my point is like, really just recognizing, okay, but we did have about a good 20 minute conversation, you know, okay. We had a 20 minute conversation and we had family meal, you know, time outside, just making memories and building that experience. But the other side of that is we've had gymnastics in the evenings. And so our sit down family time in the evenings has been really kind of cut into with those later nights. So when we are home, even if it's not like a full home cooked meal, which is really important to us, we yeah. sit down at the table. Even if he like picks up Mexican food on the way home or something, we sit down at the table. We do our regular routine of a family blessing, and then we eat together as a family. And that for me feels really good for family connection. Yeah. And then again, we are, we're pretty good with trying to just have that intentional time in the evenings. Hey, sweet mama. Did you hear the news? I'm so excited to tell you that we finally launched the mom in process blog. What? I'm so excited about this. So if you love the podcast, if you love the conversations, the mindset, the tough love, the humor, because, oh my goodness, it seems like there's so much humor in motherhood and just being a woman, then I know you are going to love the mom in process blog. It is different than how a lot of other podcasters run their blogs. And the reason why is because I didn't want to just regurgitate the already existing content. I wanted to expand on the content. I wanted to use what we're talking about and take it a step further. So the blog is absolutely worth your time. There's going to be takeaways from it. There's going to be topics that we talk about in the podcast, and there's going to be new topics that don't, that don't come up in the podcast, brand new topics. So this is additional content. This is not the same content that we're already talking about. This is additional content above and beyond what we're talking about in the podcast. They're short blog posts. So you can read it in the morning over coffee. You can read it while you're giving the kids a bath. These are short little tidbits, little nuggets of information that I want you to enjoy and just be another piece of this incredible community that we are building together in order to raise the future generation. They're just little pieces for you to live your best life and be the best version of you. So head on over to the blog at mominprocess.com slash blog. With that being said, Let's get back to the show. So how is it working for you and Jake? I mean, I could go on and on about all of the things that we're doing, (laughs) but how is it? Are you guys struggling with that right now in, in this busy season? Yeah. And, and, and that's why it's my question is because yeah, the other day, um, we, we have been on our property for one year. I think, uh, this next sat this next Saturday is one year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that time has been full of projects and I mean, busy, busy, busy. And, you know, and we are being pulled in several different directions. So, um, you know, knowing that summer is a busy time for us, we, I'm, I'm kind of looking at, okay, so is it, yeah. Like, do we need to sit down and, and say every Sunday we're going to, you know, put mm-hmm. the bed kids to bed early or, and that's a great suggestion to like, go, just go outside because the kids thrive outside and then we can have our own time. It's not like we have to entertain them while they're outside. We've got dirt piles everywhere. So yeah. <laughs> we have more than content too, you know, <laughs> even if we have to hose them off before we go inside, but yeah, no, we are, we are struggling with that. And, and we've only been together probably about five years, um, mm-hmm. married before. So we don't have all that time where, um, yeah, where we're like, well, we know each other's love language, so we can really funnel into that kind of a, you know, mm-hmm. and, and make that intentional. We're just still like 
finding that pattern as a couple a little bit, even though it seems like we should have found it by now, but we've always been busy. We're, we've always been working on projects and, and while it's fine, most of the time it does come to a head sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And the, the project thing is something we can definitely unpack a little bit too, because yeah. that we found ourselves in the same boat when we had moved into our house here and yeah. it was like, remodeling, painting, project, 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 project. And you're excited about that. And you want to dive into it because you want to make it your own, right? We have this desire to like make it cozy, make it our nest, like make it our own home. And you guys are still doing all of your landscaping work. You're still working on projects for the house itself. And then what happened for us, and this is kind of what you guys are going through right now. And I think you've expressed that Jake is feeling this is like absolute total burnout. Like that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I don't want anything to do with projects (laughs) anymore. And so it's so hard to do when spring has really just sprung and you're looking Mm -hmm. at the entire spring and summer and wanting to do like fun stuff and feeling that pull and that obligation to be home working. Yeah. And, and then there feels like there's no end in sight, like nothing to look forward to. And you just have this instinct and the desire to just like, I'm out peace. We're done. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if nothing gets finished. So yeah. We just really understand spring and summer for us on the property and in general, you know, if anybody else is listening and they don't have property per se, but just spring and summer is busier. So we take now, we take winter as really intentional slowdown time, because if we don't do that, we go immediately into the spring and summer with overwhelm and burnout because we were so busy. So like, We don't work on inside projects much, if at all, you know, we just kind of maintain that's like maintenance or like little things, but we don't dive into big projects per se. And we've had to take the last two, two winters off from that. And that was, and that was really good for us. Cause then it's like, okay, spring's here. We're ready, but that doesn't help you necessarily right now when you're in the thick of it. So what we've done is we, we, we have something to look forward to like in the month, you know? So for Brad and I, our anniversary is coming up. So we may have, and then he also has his race. So he has his race and then our anniversary trip. So we may have like totally crazy sports filled, chaotic weeks of podcasting and gardening and chores around the house and, and all of those other obligations. But we know that this weekend we will be together as a family away from Mm -hmm. projects, away from the house for time to connect and time to just experience life together outside of home. And then after that, so that's like a family activity. And then after that, we have our anniversary trip. So we're going to be gone for a couple of nights, just the two of us, as long as the kids don't get sick, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, my fingers are crossed for you. Yeah. So we, you know, we have that part to look forward to. So, and that's, you know, mid June and that, that pretty much gets us through like the springtime. And then we usually go camping in the summer when it gets too hot. We know that once it gets too hot, a lot of our outside projects slow down. The mowing slows down, the weed eating, you know, like some of that stuff slows down and then we can go camping and again, like have that time together as a family when the kids are in bed, when we're camping, Brad and I can sit outside and enjoy time together. So, I mean, I don't know if that's a perfect solution for everybody, but I do think just knowing you have something to, to look forward to, like for you and Jake, if you had something where you're like, okay. In two weeks, we are going to go, or three weeks or whatever, we're going to go have an overnight, or maybe my parents can watch the kids and we're just going to sit at home. You don't even have to go anywhere and spend money. You could just have like a date night in and sit, sit around the fire and have conversation. But like, if you have something on the calendar to look forward to, I think it really helps get you through those really busy seasons. Yeah. Do you yeah. guys, do you guys have anything on the calendar or what are you? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, in July we do, but gosh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Cause then the flip side is, um, you know, so if, if we are burnt out on projects, then we, 
we hire somebody to do, you know, we hire somebody to help us with these, with these things so that we're not so burnt out. So then you're like, all right, now what, what are we going to do? Because now we've saved all of our money so that we can hire somebody, you know, mm -hmm. to do it or, you know, or just wrapping up those projects or whatever. So then you're like, okay, what's something really cheap that we can do and the trip that we can go on, <laughs> you know, yeah. but no, we don't have anything in right now other than just, um, I mean, yeah, like going to, we live really close to a campground, so we'll, we can go there and, um, you know, going to the top of our canyon to have dinner out there or something like that. So yeah, but we, we definitely need to be more intentional about that. <laughs> so that's why I was asking yeah. you. Yeah. 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 I think just, um, I, like I said, as cliche as it sounds, we just, we just have to make it a priority and yeah. I don't love that response, which is why I'm like hesitant to say yeah. it, but if you know that you're, it causes problems when you're not connecting, you know, the other side of it is like the physical intimacy side. Like if mm -hmm. Brad and I are not connecting physically, I mean, let's just say it, if we're not having sex, okay. <laughs> like we're turning around it. No, like, okay, if Brad and I are not having sex, then there's going to be problems. Yeah. And then that actually trickles down into the feelings that we're not connected to the kids either. If Brad mm -hmm. and I aren't good, then our family dynamic isn't good. And that's just the reality. And yeah. him and I were talking about it on the way to the coast the other day, because we've been, we've been doing better about connecting intimately and trying to make that a priority. And we are so much more connected. We are yeah. so much more in tune with each other, but it is really tough as stay at home moms. I mean, at the end of the day, a total transparency, I am, and my, my kids aren't even like very young right now. And I still feel like touched out. And I think it's because it's this, just this emotional drained feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And, the, and I'm just done. I'm really just done by the time we clean up the house, we get the dishes done and we get ready for the next day. Shit. It's like between nine and 10 o'clock at night before we sit down. Right. So you're like, I am so exhausted. I can't even think about it. So for us, I like, we really try and make that a priority on the weekends. I think I've shared this in the podcast too. We really try and get that in. Oh my gosh. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> get it in on the weekends when we are both rested, relaxed and rejuvenated and, you know, just feeling a little bit better. Oh my gosh. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, I love it. So I, I don't know. It's, it's tough. You know, I, we've talked about like scheduling moments of intimacy and really, uh, even scheduling it because a lot of times when you schedule it, it happens in the evenings mm -hmm. and I'm still just, it just takes so much more to get me even excited. And yeah. then the guilt comes because I'm not enthusiastic about it. And I, it's like kind of an eye roll, like, okay, well it's Wednesday. <sighs> I guess we should probably have sex, you know, right. and cause it's on the calendar and, and that's mm. terrible. And I don't like feeling that way. And then that makes me feel guilty. So I feel so much better when we can, you know, schedule it or just know that that's a priority on the weekends right. and, and make time and space for it then when we're yeah. both relaxed. How, yeah. what about you and Jake? Yeah. Well, in the physical connection, um, regard, um, I have asked him because I, I, I can't do mornings. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes. we, let's do, um, I gotta get yeah. out of bed. I gotta go have mom time before, you know, the kids wake up and coffee, coffee time. So anyways, yeah. I have actually asked him, um, to let me know in the morning if he wants to connect physically at night at the, in the evening time so that I can prepare for all day and then make a priority to like, you know, not just, just to get in the mindset while he's putting the kids to bed to go, okay, click, we got to turn the day off. And now I can get in the, the headspace where I can connect with him. Mm -hmm. So, and that has been huge because then it's not like 10 o'clock at night and he's like, so yeah. <laughs> you know? yes. no. and then I'm like, well, I haven't even thought I ha I'm not even in the headspace to consider it. And, you know, so then I know, okay, he's wanting to let's get myself ready for that mentally or whatever. And then, and then I'm much more open to it instead of I roll, you know what I mean? Cause I do, yes. I, I, I'm like, or oh, good, or oh, get excited about it, you know? And, yeah. and afterwards it's always like 
that was such a good idea. But to get into that mind space before is like, I need some, I need some time to prep myself. Yeah. No, I, I love that because that is what Megan Caston said with marriage 365. Yeah. And that's why I got the idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, it's like a pre-funk, like I'm pre-funking, like I'm getting myself ready. I can yeah. shave my legs. Like I can like, put on my nice undies, not like my, my put your on. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. So then you get yourself ready and you're in the headspace like yeah yes absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely. I love that you have that conversation with him and then you guys can kind of kind of work through that I just I just think that we are in such a busy era without the support of the village where we can take that time away to um, just have those moments of like pause it is, it's, I just feel like it's so much more difficult for women now, like us than it used to be. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, Brad works longer hours. I know Jake's schedule, his can kind of fluctuate too. And, and it just adds to chaos. And I think now women are just pulled in so, so, so many more ways than they used to. And so adding, you know, another area in, which should be a main priority, but for us, I think a lot of the times, I mean, there's entire books, there's entire experts on the fact that like women are just putting this on the back burner and not making it a priority and it's causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having these conversations is awkward and difficult and uncomfortable, but I also think that it helps other women realize, you know, we're, we're really, a lot of us are all in the same boat, especially with really young children. And it just kind of gives us some ideas of like, okay, you know, one of the things that I loved that she suggested was writing down on the card, the number of times a week that you would want to be intimate, you know, Mm -hmm. would, how many times would you want to have sex this week? What would make you happy? And then sharing that with your spouse and Brad and I were actually on the same page. And it is, it is again, our expectations are collaboratively pretty low. <laughs> so I'm like, like yeah. So I'm like, no, yeah, I'm, just... I'm like, if we can, if we can hit that mark and, and it, it, then it, we are both so much happier. So yeah. I love that, that having that conversation and that intentional conversation with Jake is what really works for you guys. So I think that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've had a conversation with, um, and like, I don't have older children, but I can, I've had a conversation with like my mom specifically where she was like, you know what, while you guys were young, I wish we would have made that a priority because you, if you don't, and you just get in this mindset of, well, if this is just what happens when you have little kids. And so you don't connect physically or emotionally with your spouse and you just go, you know, we're in the trenches and we'll get there someday. Then you, I mean, after several years of having little kids, you lose that that mindset of we do that is a priority and so then you have teens and then you you know you're you're still in that like well we ha- we didn't connect for this many years so now we've got to find it and if we don't find it then they're grown and gone and you're like like you're you have so many um episodes I mean several episodes where you're like if you don't you know you'll you'll wake up one day and you're an empty nester and you're like who are you <laughs> you know who yeah who is my spouse and to try to find it you know try to find that connection at when you haven't used it for 10 or so years, you're like, yeah, it's yeah. so important, even though you're, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to remember that as we're in these, you know, I've got a two-year-old and the two-year-olds and you have an almost three-year-old, like that is such a challenging time because even mm-hmm. like you said, Lily, the other day you cried because she missed mommy's car, even though, you know, you guys were in <laughs> Brad's pickup. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh. If the specific blanket that we're, you know, is in the laundry, we cannot substitute it for another blanket. You know, we're just in that mindset um, as, as moms. And so, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. It's tough. Oh my gosh. The car story with Lily. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Just a total, absolute shit fit like total breakdown because just sobbing, like heartbroken 
sobbing. I shouldn't say shit fit because she was really just like sobbing, heartbroken because we were in Brad's pickup and she missed mommy's car and she just couldn't handle it because she missed mommy's car. And I was like, what is going on right now? (laughs) I don't know how to regulate your emotions when you're Mm -hmm. upset about being in the wrong car. Like, I don't even know how to help you through this. No, no, but just, yeah. And, and it's those things like those emotional challenges that you're dealing Mm -hmm. with, with the kids that I'm not in the phase of necessarily feeling touched out per se, physically, I am so emotionally drained that connecting emotionally in order to be intimate is overwhelming and it seems and feels like this huge burden and it shouldn't. So again, like us knowing we have time scheduled for our anniversary and we have a couple of nights away is really, really important to us. It is so important to have those nights. And I know a lot of the moms will say, that's just not a priority for us. or It's just not possible. And we thought for the longest time, like nights away. And there have been moments where like, this is this is feeling so impossible for us to get away. Yeah. But if we just keep trying and just keep, um, keep working on it and making that a priority, then it will eventually be able to work out. It mm-hmm. doesn't really get any easier. I'm, I'm sorry to say that like it, you never know what's going to happen. So right. like, it doesn't get any easier to, for us and a lot of other people too, to just say, we're going to be gone this weekend and we have somebody watching the kids. It's never that simple. It is always complicated, whether they're one or whether they're eight, it is always complicated. And you just never know if they're going to get sick or something's going to happen or the people you're relying on to watch them, if if that's going to pan out or if something's going to happen, if they get sick, you know, so you just have to be open to it. And you just have to try. I think the problems arise, like what you were saying is when you stop trying and you just say, okay, fine. We're just, we have to wait 10 years, just in the next decade, we're going to figure this out because the next Mm -hmm. decade comes and life has happened and now you've grown apart. So at least putting in the effort to try goes a long way in sending the message to your spouse and to yourself that you care and, and you want to make this work and you want to make this happen. So, um, that's, that's my thoughts, at least on connecting, you know, with each other and then, and connecting as a family, you know, again, like staying up late, having our sit down blessings and our, and our family meals, like even if it's outside in the evenings, but it is a challenging time. The busy season Mm -hmm. in spring is really, is really challenging. So Yeah. All right. Cassie, do you have any other questions today? Q and (laughs) A's. Okay. I love it. Okay. And I did have a question. I just wanted to add, I had a question that came in from a listener, but we are going to save that and do like a multiple Q and a series. So if anybody ever has any other questions, we do save those and we set them aside. So you can always email Cassie and let her know, or you can send me a DM, but, um, if you want to, it's Cassie at, so it's C-A-S-S-I-E at mominprocess.com um, or you can send myself a DM or um, yeah, send it, send a message on Instagram or send us emails. So Cassie, yeah. thanks for joining me today yeah. for yeah. a mom chat and we'll connect again soon. Woo-hoo. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. Hun. Bye. Bye.